Yeah, hi there. Well, I'm in the desert today. At least looks like that. Perhaps that that's the closest thing to a desert um, that we can get here in Germany. I'm not sure, but mm-hmm. This place is um, it's about 20 kilometers uh, from Bremen. And yeah, it's it's not it's not a sign of of, of madness of men. Uh, it is natural. So this is a, a dune, a wandering sand dune. So it was a wandering, um, but but that is long ago. So. Um, now it's it's just standing still. So because they did some plantation around, some they, they planted some trees and I don't know. So normally there shouldn't be any trees here. So, but it's under protection uh, since I think since 1935 or something. So it's a natural monument. It's pretty large. I remember this place uh, pretty good. Uh, hasn't been here for, for many years, many years. But during the days of, of my childhood, um, our family, we, we used to come here. So uh, we didn't ha have that much money. And yeah, that's for free here to come here, having a picnic and just having a great time and I remember I had so this is really some kind of adventurous place though especially it's because it's so strange in some ways especially when you're a child so this is not like uh, what, what, what northern Germany normally looks like so <laughs> where you guys know we have a lot of rain so uh, normally in all the the landscape is pretty green mm. It is, but not here. So, I don't know exactly, but it is about 500,000 square meters or something. So it's not that big, but seems big if you're a child. And it is big if you wander around here. Um, and it's no place you, you want to go, let's say, on the hot days of August. So I wanted to show you this place uh, for quite a while, but yeah, I didn't want to do it in, in July or August. Well, that's incredible, incredibly hot, man. Mmm. Yeah. That's nice here. Normally pretty quiet, but you see, pipe presenters curse another time. I was sitting here for, for, I don't know, half an hour. Nobody came here, nobody around, no plane. <laughs> the moment you start it, that's the moment of truth, always for, for the pipe presenter. Yeah. Anyway, I think we, we, we like that. I don't know why, but some kind of challenge. <laughs> so, sitting here, smoking my, my Alibarinche, or one of my Alibarinches. So this, I showed you this pipe in my Ali Berenci video. I hope the camera gets this damn light. So, but I had the stem changed. Not because the stem was bad or something, but I just wanted to have another stem. So uh, with an extra silver ring. So I had this done uh, by my stem maker uh, near Hamburg. And he's he's. He is hell of a craftsman, uh, I tell you. So, uh, yeah. He does pretty good stamps. So, especially what I like with a with a flat bite here. So, so very flat here, so that you can you can hold that, can clinch that. That's something I really appreciate. And you see, although this pipe is so big, it's it's meerschaum, so it's light and. You can clinch that. Mm hmm. Smokes pretty well. So, 
today I want to talk uh, about uh, about something that that crossed my mind for quite a while. So, um, and this would be the topic would be if, if I if I just had to name it would be underrated tobacco, underrated tobacco. And tell you what I'm smoking because that that's just something that that fits to this. I I think so. It's just what I think. So it's uh, a Robert McConnell. Uh, it's a Black Parole. Black Parole. Show you the tin. I think it's quite nice uh, tin art. So where's the Parole? Uh, yeah. I see it's black. Black Parole. So as always. Perhaps I first tell you what they say about the tobacco, but I ain't gonna tell you. That won't be that easy because I don't know. They make the, the 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 script here on that. This is so small. Uh, I have to turn off that. So they say, a black parole is a unique square cut, straight Virginia of crusted appearance. Formulated from a balanced blend of Virginia, flavory Carolina, and pure Louisiana Perique. A blend that encompasses flavor, maturity, and mellow smoking. The several growths interact, and the skill of the blender is exercised in arriving at a balance to tempt the palate. Uh, made on the coach press, Scottish press method. Mm -hmm. The block of leaf is held for one day under pressure, so that's the interesting part. Uh, after all that prep talk, uh, it's held for one day under pressure and heat, and left for weeks to gently cool down. I don't know if it really needs weeks to cool down, but we take that. Uh, cool down and for the flavors to emerge. The pressure is maintained and as the blend matures it darkens in color to produce maturity and character. A great favorite with both young and experienced smokers worldwide. So, I don't know. Are there any greater words for tobacco? Yeah, I think that's part of the business. To ring the bell. Anyway, uh, uh, we don't want to be irritated by that. Um, what is it? It is a Virginia Perique, so it's a vapor. Uh, I show you the tobacco, as always. Mm. Come on. I hope that works. Should do the trick. So, when you open the tin and you got a, got a first whiff of it, you really know what it is. It is Virginia Perique. There is really enough Perique in it, so you can already smell the Perique. And the moment you light it up, it is peppery, it is really strong enough, and it is really, really good tobacco. This is a tobacco really good for celery. So, now comes the point. Now, first, I, I tell you the price. So, the price is uh, 21 euro 60 cent. So, normal price, I think, for 100 gram. That's okay. So, don't, don't get the wrong idea, so, just because it's Black Parole, so Black Parole, so, well, you know, some of these tobaccos, they have strange names. It's not really strange, but some of these tobaccos, perhaps, just lead you in the wrong direction. 
So when I first heard Black Perot, I immediately thought that this gonna be tobacco with some rum casing or whatever. So why is that? So Perot, I don't know why, but Perot very often gives you the idea of pirates. Well, you know, these Perots in the old days, they came with the sailors. And of course not what, I don't know, normal sailors or you know, Navy sailors uh, from the army, so from the Navy. Um, but very often with these pirate folks, let's say that. Well, that's at least that's the image uh, we have. So, And pirates, well, that means rum. Uh, and both fits together because, well, these, these Perots, they come from the southern seas so from the Caribbean uh, perhaps and um, the rum also so there's some kind of related so that's that's why, why I I had the idea so Perot well that, that may be something with rum so well, that is wrong so so I, I could complain about the about the name but I won't do that so um, there are many tobaccos I just wanted to mention but there are many tobaccos where I think the name is not really properly picked, so they they, they didn't do enough thinking about the name. So yeah, but anyway, um, I think that's um, yeah, that's not a singularity or whatever. So so um, yeah, really good tobacco. Um, and why did I say I want to talk about underrated tobacco? Well, guys. Um, Perhaps you think about, for me, there are three main groups when it comes to tobacco um, and the image of a certain tobacco. Where well, we all know these overrated tobaccos. I, I won't drop any names, uh, so, but we all know them. Hard to get stuff. Um, sometimes even just a, a simple vapor, perhaps. A flake, red rough, or whatever, same as this is. Uh, and I'm just being very famous, and it is good tobacco. So, overrated tobacco normally is good tobacco, but not as good as the images uh, of the tobacco. There are several of these tobaccos. And we have a second group of tobaccos. Uh, this is the really the, the well known stuff of high quality. You can even call that great tobacco but it is available it is traditional for a long period uh, we all every pipe smoker knows these uh, these brands and these blends and um, and that's pretty good so that's that's a, a, a nice group you can get it it is great tobacco uh, perhaps even reasonable price so let's say it, uh, to give an example uh, for me, so McBaron's Dark Twist, that would be one of these tobaccos. Yeah. So you can even call that unique. Um, and I think it's, it's really great tobacco. But it's not hard to get. You, you, you can get that wherever you are, nearly wherever you are, and um, reasonable price. So this is one group of tobaccos, and thanks God we have them. Um, but there's a third group, and this group I think really um, that really deserves our our, our interest. Um, and this third group that would be uh, I, I would call that underrated tobacco. Um, so. It's not tobacco completely unknown, perhaps. So, the whole brand, I'm talking here about the whole brand, at least in Europe. So, and these tobaccos, Robert McCall tobaccos, um, and these are done by Kohlhauser. And Kohlhauser is a fine company, uh, and they, they, they really know their, their stuff, uh, how to handle the tobacco and so on. And so, Kohlhauser, um, they have. They produce for, for other companies under completely other names and so on, and producing even for, 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 for big names. Um, 
but they're also producing uh, for themselves, but not under Kohlhase. Uh, that would be Red Race then, for example. So this is one of their house brands. And um, this brand is pretty well known. So in most of the shops when you go here, you, you find Red Race tobaccos. So Ronnie, for example, he has all the Red Race stuff. And this is good stuff. So Malcolm Flake is, is one of this, these really that fits in the second group, so this is really one of those well-known tobaccos and, and an amazing quality. So I'm going to talk about uh, Malcolm Flake, I think, uh, pretty soon because it's really good tobacco. Um, so okay, but then they have the Robert McConnell tobaccos. Let's say tobaccos like the Scottish Cake. There's a video on the channel about the Scottish Cake if you're interested in that. And and this is one of these uh, these tobaccos, and perhaps. Um, I don't know if you ever had that experience, but I, but I guess because uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's an experience we all will face sooner or later. So um, you just find out that there is a tobacco you haven't heard of it. There may be reviews, but perhaps you haven't seen them, or it's not that much, and it's not that well known, and. Um, and you, you don't expect much. So when I ordered that, I didn't expect much. So I thought, yeah, well, well, okay, it's a vapor. Let's give it a shot. And you ordered that, and you open the tin, and you take your first whiff, and you think, wow, that is interesting. That is interesting. But you don't really expect that it can keep up um, during the smoke. And then suddenly you're really surprised because it is a good smoke, perhaps even a great smoke. And then you think, um, yeah, why, why the heck is that tobacco? I don't know. Why doesn't have the tobacco the respect that it deserves in the community or for the majority of pipe smokers? Let's say that. Why can't I find these brands or these? All these special blend in many shops, in most shops or whatever. So, and I think there are several reasons for that. So, uh, one reason maybe in this case, just talking about this case, um, that Kohlhauser they they like to push the Retrace brand, and well, you know these shops they don't have unlimited space on the shelf, so. Ronnie has all the Red Ray stuff on the shelf, and that's that's already a lot. Um, and would be difficult to to have, let's say, another shelf just for Robert McConnell stuff. So this this brand, that's my feeling, is a little bit in the shadow of the Red Ray's brand. And Kohlhaas likes to push the Red Ray's brand, of course. I think they would like to sell the, the Robert McConnell stuff too. But if they have to to choose, if they have just to pick one. So I, I think they, they stick to the Red Race brand. It's just a thought, so I don't know if it is like that, but um, and there may be even shops that are they just onto the, onto the Robert McConnell brand. Perhaps the shop owner, I don't know, has special thinking about that and he just likes the stuff or whatever. So maybe. There may be many reasons for that. So, yeah, just a thought. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that it gives us the chance to just to watch out for for these things. And uh, what I wanted to say uh, in the end uh, to long story short, um, is um, there is still enough out there uh, what we haven't seen before or what we didn't try before just because we, we, we yeah, just didn't didn't see that it's there on the market and sometimes it, it, it always was so that, that's <laughs> that's something 
Well, that's an idea that I like, so it's always been there. So this tobacco is, is, is a traditional tobacco in, in many ways, but I think most of the, there's a special group of, of pipe smokers, of course, they, they know nearly everything, so. But I think most pipe smokers in, in, in Germany, more than 90% perhaps, uh, they, they've never heard about that, so, because it's not in the shops. And if they say here it's it's famous and worldwide, yeah, if it's famous and worldwide, why isn't it in the shop? So, um, yeah, that's just, uh, I don't know, that's just uh, wishful thinking, uh, <laughs> I think. But it is really, really good tobacco, and this is really something you want to put down the cellar, so it's a great vapor, um, it's fine quality. One of those underrated tobaccos, for me, for me. Yeah, another two cents. <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't know. Perhaps you think completely different about them. Just, just the thought that crossed my mind. Mm, just want to to mention that that there is still enough tobacco out there. Some guys ask me, oh, well, how many videos did you do?" And, um, you're always having a, a new tobacco, how much tobacco is there, you, you will come to an end. And I say no, I don't think I would ever come to an end when it comes to tobacco, so uh, there's, there's enough good stuff out there and um, even enough stuff uh, that is not, I don't know, over-reviewed. It's always fine to have several reviews about tobacco. I think even important. But um, yeah. Well, there are also some tobaccos. I think they are over-reviewed. Uh, if there's something like that, so. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, well, that's it. Um, didn't watch the clock, but I think I'm already over. Okay gonna smoke that fine bowl up to the ground really burns to white ashes it's good tobacco um, and then I'm gonna head back find my way out of this small North German desert <laughs> let's hope so okay guys hope you all are well uh, and hope perhaps you 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 gonna watch out uh, yourself for some underrated tobacco and, and present that or just uh, give a hint on that and uh, yeah be well guys uh, take care perhaps see you again <laughs>